Today we are going to go over the end of the Industrial Revolution. Now why does this matter? The end of the Industrial Revolution is so important because you and I have been programmed to follow after the ways of the Industrial Revolution. It's influenced the way that you work, the way that you understand uh, corporate America, the way that you understand your education, the way that you understand why you should be getting a check every 1st and 15th. Society, as you know, it has been modeled based upon the Industrial Revolution. But now you have to understand that we are in a new age. We're in the information age. And if you want to be able to compete and you want to be able to succeed past this point for years to come, it's going to be time for you to unlearn some of the things that you learned that came from the Industrial Revolution. So let's get right into it, right? So the first thing that we're going to do is... We're going to talk a little bit about the history of the Industrial Revolution. Now, this isn't going to be like your boring history lesson that you got in elementary school, middle school, high school, college, etc. This is not going to be a snooze fest. I'm just going to give you a brief background so you can understand the context of why the Industrial Revolution impacts you. Because it's impacted all of us. So the Industrial Revolution began in the 1700s. It started in the United Kingdom. When the Industrial Revolution began, it was something that increased the amount of productivity in society through factory labor, right? So, whenever you're thinking about the Industrial Revolution, you had a lot of different inventions that came from it. You had things like machinery that was being built to help in factory processes. You had things like railroads that were being built. But the thing that we want to stick with for this lesson is the factory. And not only do we want to talk about the factory, because in the Industrial Revolution, it just wasn't the factory that was created. What was also created in the Industrial Revolution was the factory worker. Right? This is where you and I fit in. Due to the Industrial Revolution... You and I have been trained and programmed to be factory workers, okay? Say it with me, factory workers. The factory worker mindset was created in the Industrial Revolution. So, again, when the Industrial Revolution was set up, it was all about mass production. It wasn't so much about actually having a strong skill set in your job and individual performance, when the Industrial Revolution was created, it was all about mass production. Like, say, for example, cars, automobiles, right? A lot of people needed automobiles, so they said, how can we mass produce cars, okay? What about um, toys, for example? Lots of kids want toys. Everybody wants to have fun. Mass production of toys was put on things like assembly lines, right? So it was the job of the factory worker in the Industrial Revolution to see how many toys can be pumped out per hour, per day, per month, per quarter, right? You were operating, doing some type of monotonous activity every single day, same task, sound familiar? You were doing the exact same task every single day, getting a paycheck, and that was the nature of work in the Industrial Revolution, which has birthed the wage slave. The wage slave is a byproduct of the Industrial Revolution because the Industrial Revolution has taught us in order to thrive in society, we have to work for some large corporation. Working at the large corporation will allow us to work eight hour days. And, you know, when the Industrial Revolution was created, you know, and, and a lot of uh, like steel corporations, people were working 12 hours a day. Some people were working 10 hours a day. But we adopted the type of nine to five labor shift in the Industrial Revolution. We were taught to be factory workers working nine to five. You clock in, you put in the work, you do the job. And then what would be the byproduct? You would get your check on the first and the 15th. Right. So. This was the basis of labor.
right? So this was the labor aspect of the Industrial Revolution. Follow me now. Started in the 1700s. And from many of us, like my parents, your parents, etc., they were living at a time period to where they were working for large corporations. The corporations was letting them work as employees for 10 years, 20 years, 30 years, some people 50 years. They were walking away with these big pensions, these nice retirements, you know, all of this, you know, employee loyalty, etc. Half of that stuff isn't even around anymore. So the reason why I want you to be aware of that is because we are at the end of the Industrial Revolution. Now we are in the Information Age. But going back to what we're saying here about the existence of labor in the Industrial Age, not only did you have labor that was created in the Industrial Revolution, you also had the education system that you and I know today that was created from the Industrial Revolution. So to make a long story short, whenever the people who invented the Industrial Revolution came up with the concept of factory workers in a factory working system, everybody was foreign as to how to do their job. Nobody was experienced, right? Because this prior to the Industrial Revolution, you had a lot of people work through agriculture. You had a lot of people who were independent farmers. You had people that were working in other occupations that wasn't just sitting up behind some machine on an assembly line somewhere in a factory. So whenever people started to shift and make the transition to the factory mindset, you had people that were inexperienced. They didn't know what they were doing. And the people that was put on the labor force was men, women, and children. You know, children during this time period, 1700s, 1800s, the kids at a very young age, they were put in these types of jobs just like the adults were. And a lot of the kids had to work harder than the adults. But then the same forefathers that created the Industrial Revolution, they eventually understood that due to people's lack of training and education, that was making their operations less efficient because you had people that were dying on the job. You know, the machines were hazardous. The working conditions were horrible. And so what they understood was in order to make their productivity better in the factory, they actually had to train people and give them an education on how to become better factory workers and better wage slaves. This is the education system that you and I know today. The people that have created the education system that you and I have gone through are the same people that have created the labor force, the system of labor in the Industrial Revolution. Because they said, we need to teach people how to be better factory workers. This is the reason why usually we traditionally go to school for around eight hours a day. This is the reason why a lot of the things in the education system is based upon uh, strict obedience, right? Because it's all about teaching you how to be compliant as a factory worker. Now, maybe again, maybe you're doubting this. You have to ask yourself, why is it that the majority of people, right, that were brought through the education system, geared and programmed, to get out of college or get out of high school or whatever, you know, education level that they stopped, you know, schooling, their schooling at. Why is it then that after when they got out of school, their immediate task was to find a job that was a traditional nine to five? Because the education system was created by the same people that created the nine to five. This is the reason why. We are not given an education system that has a strong emphasis on personal finance. You got to ask yourself if all these kids are going to these schools and personal finance is so important, right? Your productivity is so important. Being self sufficient is so important. Why were we never taught many of these concepts in school? Why is it that you were taught that? Christopher Columbus discovered America. Why is it that you were taught that Thanksgiving is all about 
the pilgrims and the Indians just having such peaceable treaties and everyone was sitting around the table and had such a festive time. And this is how America was built. How is it that you have learned all of these things, including the national emblems of these random states and countries, but you were never actually taught the fundamentals that were needed for you to thrive in society? Because that was never the basis of the education system in the first place. The basis of the education system was to produce more competent factory workers. That's the truth of the situation, ladies and gentlemen. You can refute it, but do the research. Thanks to the internet, we now have Google, we have Wikipedia. Now this is becoming common knowledge. That's the reason why they said on society, in the age of information, ignorance is a choice, right? So now you have to now you have to look back at the situation and realize, okay, if the education system was built by the same people that created the Industrial Revolution's labor setup and labor standards, now you have to ask yourself, okay, what are you really being educated about? What is the education being geared towards? Because not everybody wants to be a nine-to-five worker. Not everybody wants to be geared to be a wage slave. Because if you were getting true education, especially in this day and age, your education could be more geared to how to set up a budget, how to schedule your day, how to operate effectively on a to-do list, the things that you need to do in order to be a more self-sufficient, skilled laborer at what it is that you do, right? A lot of these things are things that we never learn. So I want you to take one big look at how the Industrial Revolution impacts you today. The next thing that I want you to understand is this system of the Industrial Revolution is now coming to an end. I'm going to say that again. This entire setup, right, of the factory worker, it is coming to an end. That's the reason why, I guess, what happened during the recession. How many times did you see these major corporations go under? How many, how many companies can you think of right now that might have existed in the 1700s, 1800s, even 1900s that are nowhere around right now in 2016? It's not around anymore because now we're beginning to operate under a different system, right? But the problem is you and I have been so groomed and educated to follow this system that even though we're, we are embarking on a totally different point in history now, we're still training ourselves to become wage slaves by being factory workers, right? So here's what I mean. When we were um, going through the height of the recession, right? Like I said, you had many corporations that were being shut down. Um, you had like a lot of companies like uh, GM, for example. You had many different companies that had to perform these mass layoffs of these employees because they realized that a lot of the roles that people were being paid at one time top dollar to follow because the Industrial Revolution, that really sparked the economy, right? Throughout society, in America as well as other places. It increased the standards of economy. But then, in time, guess what happened? As technology continued to evolve, you didn't need to be able to have all of these people in the workforce to do these specific jobs. Because now technology had evolved to a point where you didn't need people, you just needed machines. Machines could be your bank tellers. Machines could be the person that you talk to on the other end of the line. Machines could be the same ones doing some of the previous manual labor that existed on the assembly line, right? So even though my parents and your parents may have benefited well from the fruits of the Industrial Revolution, Many of us right now who have just gotten out of college or 10 years removed from college, 15 years removed, if you still have 10 to 20 years minimum of working years left in your life, you need to get a wake-up call that the Industrial Revolution is now gone. 
And if you're still working on that old system, you're going to be in trouble. Here's the reason why you're going to be in trouble. Um, in the Industrial Revolution, right, they created what is known or what I will call the gatekeeper complex. So the gatekeeper complex says, in order for you to make money, in order for you to be able to engage with a customer, you have to go through a company that's big enough to take in customers. I'll give you uh, a prime example, right? Let's say that Let's say that you wanted to sell somebody something, right? I'll just put it very basic. You're a seller, right? But you might be like an individual merchant. You might be trying to do your own thing, right? What society would tell you through the gatekeeper complex is you would not have any effective way of going directly to a customer. So now you would need some intermediary through a corporation to be able to get to the customer, right? Because again, prior to the internet and things like that, the world in some ways was, was much smaller because maybe, you know, if you were living in a small town or a small city or even some metropolitan cities, you were very limited to the people that you knew personally. I mean, you didn't, cell phones didn't exist. Uh, computers and internets and tablets at that time didn't exist. So there was a, a much smaller demographic of people that you had the privilege of getting in contact with. So what corporations did was they say, don't worry about it. Because we're the, such this big name company, and everybody knows us because we pretty much have monopolized the system. The customer is going to come to the corporation to get the good. And you are going to turn into the worker at the corporation to be able to get the money in a nine to five check that will come from the customer. You see what I'm saying? You're having to go to a gatekeeper to get the money that was coming from a customer. That's what I'm trying to say in, in layman's terms, you needed a middleman, so to speak. But now, through the advent of things like the internet, the need for a large corporation no longer exists because now, through the internet, the seller has a much better opportunity to have a direct-to-consumer relationship with the customer, okay? This is the reason why a lot of corporations are going under. I'll give you a prime example. Through the advent of things like the internet, it creates a lot more innovative opportunities. This is the reason why during my generation, one of the major busts that we saw was the going under of the company Blockbuster by Netflix, Right? Because of the innovation that existed through technology, i.e. the internet, these guys recognize that, you know what, maybe there's a different way that consumers could be engaged without having to always be a big time corporation, without having to be a big time conglomerate. Let's say another example. Let's say that... Um, Again, going back to the analogy of a seller, right? Let's say that you were a seller and you wanted to sell, let's just say toothpaste, keep it very basic. Years ago, if you wanted a large market of people to be able to buy your toothpaste, you probably would have had to make a radio commercial or a television commercial. And there was only a limited number of those corporations in existence because, again, the large corporations had everything on lock. They had it on a monopoly, right? Everything was in the power of the gatekeeper. Everything was in the power of the corporation. 
whenever the seller would have to get to the customer, they would have to say, okay, if I want to be able to reach a large audience so that way I can make ends meet and survive, I would have to pay a large sum of money for a radio commercial. I would have to pay a large sum of money to be able to get a television commercial. That's not so much the case in today's age. Now through the power of the internet, you have a direct to consumer engagement from the seller to the customer. Give you a prime example, myself. I'm wanting you to get this information now. I'm teaching you this information now, right? Decades ago, I could have said, well, the only way that I could teach you this information is if I went to some large university who monopolized the system of education and then that would give me a platform to be able to come and tell you about how you're getting duped right now into being a wage slave. Now that's not the case. Now all I have to do is, using the internet, I can go directly on YouTube to share with you this video and I'm going to directly engage with you through the internet. See, this is one of the primary reasons why the industrial revolution is coming to an end. Because as technology continued to advance past the point of the industrial revolution, you had inventions like the internet, which stopped the need to have a middleman in the first place, right? No longer do you need to go to a top corporation to get certain products and services. Now the internet is creating opportunities for the common man like you and I to go direct to the consumer to be able to have customer engagement. That's what you and I are benefiting off of right now. If you're watching this video, you're benefiting off of the information age. But as much as you're benefiting from it and seeing me do it and interacting with you, I want you to benefit from it by understanding how this same model can be replicated in your life. For example, there is, a, there is a shift now in society where we're no longer in the industrial revolution. So it is not as mandatory for you to have to go through the traditional school system. Now you have online schooling. You have homeschooling. You have different platforms where you're getting a worthwhile education that's not as monopolized as the traditional powers that be. But the problem that I'm having with a lot of the parents of today is you still think that we're in the industrial revolution and you take the best and the brightest of your kids and friends of your kids and you say, you know what you should do? You should go to a really good school, get the really good grades, so that way you can work at somebody else's job and go back to the gatekeeper just to have some paycheck come in, pennies on the dollar of what the customer is going to give to the corporation, right? Because everybody knows that if you're working as an individual, you're going to make the corporation a lot more money than what the corporation is going to give you in return. That's how it works, right? So if you're being compensated, let's just say $50,000 a year, that means that you have a skill set that's making the corporation a hell of a lot more money than $50,000 a year. Now, if you have the best and the brightest of your children going through this system, if they were so smart in the first place, why wouldn't they just go to the customer for the money directly, right? <laughs> You're in America. You have the advent of the internet. Why is it that you keep telling the best and your brightest, go to school, do the public system route, so that way you can get out of college and get a nine to five job? Think about how mythical that model is in 2016. Think about how many times you have read news articles, watched news on the television, heard stories from your peers about getting out of college, making top grades, 
still to only be unemployed and be having to go back home and live with at your mother's house or your father's house. This is showing you that the failed model that existed in the Industrial Revolution is no longer effective today. And there's going to still be a large number of people who's going to try to refute what I'm saying and send me some comment and be like, oh, well, you know, the American way is still in effect. We still have the American dream and we have we believe in the customer. We believe in the corporation and we do all of these things. And then you're going to continue to have all of these people that have paid Sally Mae tons and tons of dollars just so that way you can go into a scarce job market and not recoup on the money that you invested in your education. I'm giving you all of this information for free. I'm trying to get you to understand that in the information age, one of the things that's different from the information age than the Industrial Revolution is actual information, right? When you were in, let's go back to what we were at before, right? When you were in the Industrial Revolution, the education was being dictated to you. You didn't have things like YouTube or, you know, Udemy or all of these different online systems that was giving you the real deal on things for free. Hell, we didn't, I remember when I was in school, Wikipedia was a big deal because we were going and just using like Britannicas and encyclopedias from the library. But now that's being completely revolutionized. So if you're still in this same archaic system of going through the traditional education route, and I'm not saying, I'm not expecting everybody to just say to hell with this approach. I'm just saying at some step along the way, it's got to click in your mind to realize that the cycle that you are going through of education to factory worker to wage slave to pennies on the dollar to whatever else the case may be. There's a better way now for the person that really wants to make it through the information age because you don't have to go through as many gatekeepers, right? The schools and the universities at one time, they were the huge gatekeepers on education. The factory workers in the Department of Labor, at one point in time, they were the huge gatekeepers on economic opportunity. But now, through the advent of the internet, now it has weakened the value of the corporation. This is why you are starting to see corporations crumble. Because as corporations are continually trying to survive in this market, they are outsourcing jobs. They are cutting back on employee benefits, on employee salaries, etc. The corporate model is not meant for the employee to win. <laughs> it's not meant for you to succeed. It's just simply to sense, it's simply to sustain your way of making a living. There's a very low chance that you're going to go to the gatekeeper of the corporation and make a fortune, right? That's the reason why most of the, the richest people in the world, they own businesses themselves because they've come to the realization that in order for them to make a lot of money, they're going to have to come up with a method to go to the customer themselves, not go to some gatekeeper who's going to control their livelihood. Now, again, like I'm saying, all of this is being put together for your education and for your learning, because the same way that I was in corporate America and I had to learn these things, I want you to learn these things as early as possible. So if you have been one of those people who you always thought that there was a better way, take comfort now in knowing the fact that there is a better way. Do I still think that people are going to go to a corporation to get opportunities? Sure. And not everybody should be an entrepreneur. But you do need to know now that the game is being played differently because in the information age, information is king, right? In the world of the Industrial Revolution, productivity was king, right? I'll give you a prime example. 
I want to write this down to make sure you really have this cemented down. In the information age, it is about skill. It is about being connected to your resources, to your customers, right? It's about skill and having the ability to connect with your customers. The people who are killing it in society right now and the people who are going to continue to kill it for years to come, these are the things that they are mastering. They are mastering the ability to become the most skillful people in their industry and they are going to use the internet to be connected with the customer while saying to hell with the gatekeeper, right? These are going to be the winners in this era, the information age that we are in now. So if you have a kid, this is the path that I would most recommend. You can go back to the old model, but what is the old model all about? The old model through the industrial revolution is all about production and compliance right that's all there that's the primary focus in the industrial revolution how many widgets how many products how fast can you get something done right for as cheap as possible because the corporation is looking for cheap products Cheap labor, etc. That's why Walmart was such a big hit. They're looking for how they can mass produce as cheaply as possible. And they want you to be compliant in the process. So as jobs are being cut, they want you to be compliant. Why do you have to come to work every single day at 9 a.m.? At 9 a.m.? It's a matter of compliance, right? This is how this model is built. You must understand this information age that we are delving into now, right? For the millennials and up. This information age that we are delving into now, it's the new gold rush. It is how the world will evolve, right? And again, you don't have to believe anything of what I'm saying. You can go back to living this lifestyle or it's trying to stay in this existence all you want. But... If you get a rude awakening five years from, from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, don't say I didn't warn you. A lot of the major corporations are going under. And this is one of the most opportune times for the individual to make it. Because now through the power of the internet, he can go directly to the consumer. Okay? So with that being said, I'm going to close off the lesson for today because I don't want to overwhelm you with what we've discussed. The main takeaway that I want you to be able to understand is that when we shifted from the industrial revolution to the information age, the people who are going to get the memo and make the shift, they're going to win. They're going to understand that they have opportunities now through technology that was never really taught to them in high school or in middle school, etc. These people were self-learners. These people will see the opportunity and they're going to shift from their industrial factory worker, wage slave way of thinking to the independent model that can exist in the information age. These are going to people, these are going to be the people that win for decades to come. This is going to be on the incline. The industrial age, the age of the gatekeeper, the age of the middleman, the age of the major corporation calling all of the shots and monopolizing all of the labor and the economy. That is coming to an end. The, the reason is because not only do you have the internet, which 
cuts off the need for a gatekeeper, there's a lot more opportunity now in the age of information. If I want to learn something new, I don't have to enroll in a college just to understand how to perform the skill or the trade. Now I just can go on YouTube.com or another online information base to be able to understand the information. And a lot of times it's for free, right? Even like what we're going over right now, a lot of times you would have had to go through an actual college course for that. You would have had to go to a community college or some type of program, whatever, and you would have had to pay some amount of money for that. This is the reason why the information age is going to crush this system. But if you are still living in this system, when this goes under, my hope is that you won't go under with it. My hope is that you will understand the shift that's being made and you're going to start investing in the learning that you're going to need to be able to compete in this new information age. This is the new gold rush. This is where society is going, okay? So, my hope is that you got something from today's lesson. I want you to share this message with your friends, your family, anybody who is struggling for a job. I was working in a nine to five, but it dawned on me one day, and I was getting paid well in nine to five. I was working as an IT project manager in one of the largest technology companies in the world. But it dawned on me one day that if I have the internet and I have been educated on how to be proficient in using the internet, how smart would I be to know all of this technology If I could not use it for myself in the information age, why would I still need to rely on a gatekeeper that's going to marginalize my skill because it's only about production and compliance anyway? Why would I rely on a gatekeeper to marginalize my production or marginalize my skill for the sake of production when I could use these exact same skills that I'm using at a nine to five and be able to put it into my own enterprise, right? Now, I know a lot of you are saying, oh, well, that's easier said than done. It's harder to build a business. You know what? It's going to be a hell of a lot harder as the years go on to stay in the industrial age and think that somebody's entitled to handing you a check. That's going to be really hard. It's going to be really hard to go to school for 20 years just to come to the realization that half the things that they taught you in school will have no value in you being able to thrive in the modern world. I want you to pick this side because this is what's going to pay off for you in the long run, okay? So share this video. I want you to leave me a comment. Tell me your thoughts. Tell me how you're going to make the shift from the industrial age to the information age to get with the times, to get with the program, to get hit. And I want you to get to work, right? The choice is yours. It's time for us to be productive. And the only thing that I'm here to do is show you the tools that you need for real life success. I'll see you in the next episode.